very excited and honored that Jordan is joining us from the Student Wellness Center today to, this is our third webinar as a part of the Live Well Faculty Wellness Webinar Series. It's a mouthful. Live Well, we'll call it that for short. Jordan has joined us in the past. It may have been a year ago. And we've been working with Jordan for multiple years on health and wellness, in particular for students, but a lot of collaboration just from a university culture of wellness standpoint. So let me just briefly introduce Jordan, and then I'm going to go off camera, and I'm going to be quiet and go on mute and questions put in the Q&A, comments put in the Q&A, because again, that chat feature is not working for me. And Jordan will obviously answer and I can help facilitate that stuff at the end. So a little bit of background on Jordan. She has been with the Student Wellness Center, as I mentioned, for almost five years now. And she provides training and education to specifically related to our topic, faculty and staff on how they can best support their students in their wellness journeys, help create that wellness focused environment for the student communities, whatever that looks like from what area of campus you're coming from. You, you, Jordan, also oversee graduate and professional student outreach, as well as the wellness assessment that goes out to our students every year. Jordan received her master's in education, master of arts in education, in leadership in higher ed from Baldwin Wallace University, and again, has been with OSU for almost five years. So Jordan, yeah. thank you so much and take it away. Thank you. Wonderful. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be here today uh, to talk to you about the student experience and the importance of wellness. Um, you know, throughout the series, we've been learning about the importance of wellness for ourselves and how we can, you know, build that into our routines. Um, but we want to incorporate our students into that conversations as well. Uh, it's so important for their experience here for them to thrive um, during their academic career. Thank you for that introduction, Megan. Um, as we said, if you have any questions, throw them in the chat, or if you want to raise your hand, we can also do that um, and answer them live. Live, um, if you unmute yourself. So we can, we're going to figure it out as we go. Um, please put questions in throughout and uh, we'll definitely have time for that at the end. So talking about the student experience and the importance of wellness, we're going to talk about what does wellness look like on campus? Um, our office, the Student Wellness Center, focuses specifically on holistic wellness, so really focusing on the whole individual rather than just one area um, or into like crisis intervention or treatment. Our office doesn't do that. We focus more on like that holistic piece. And so what this means um, for our health and well-being team here within student life, um, it really putting it into these four different buckets. So thinking about access, education, outreach, and treatment. Um, the Student Wellness Center falls into this, these first three categories of access, education, and outreach really trying to educate the campus community, improving that health literacy, really taking a preventative public health approach to the way that we're interacting with our students. Um, and that's where you all come on board, right? Like this is a huge campus. Uh, we're a staff of 15. Um, we can't, you know, reach every single one of our students here on campus. And so bringing you all into the conversation, giving you the education and training that you need to help us support our students is going to better the culture that we're creating here um, at Ohio State. I also have this nice graphic here on the screen. Um, Ohio State does practice the 10 dimensions of wellness. Um, you can see the different dimensions here on the screen. Uh, we'll send these slides out afterwards so you have access to them and can you know, read them in more detail. Um, I'll also send out a couple of links, including one to our 10 dimensions of wellness education page on the Student Wellness Center website. So you can learn more about each of the dimensions. There's tips and tricks on how you can incorporate them in and outside the classroom, as well as just further information on what each of them are and how you can can improve in your own well-being in each of the different areas as well. Um, the last piece that I want to highlight within this graphic is this justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion piece. Um, and recognizing um, that JEDI plays such an important role in um, our access to education and our healthcare and how we approach our healthcare needs. Um, it's such an important piece and really wanting to make sure that we're recognizing health equity and who does and does not have access to resources. And so that's why access is up here because it's a really important piece to making sure that we're connecting students to the resources, not just within the Student Wellness Center, but across campus and in the community. 
second piece here is that we really do try to take this multimodal approach, right? So um, thinking about referrals, this is where you all come into play, right? Referring students to resources on campus. We're a very resource-rich campus. We're going to get into this here in a minute. Um, so however, we can educate ourselves to learn about those resources, to learn about those programs, um, opportunities for support, um, the better we'll be able to support our students and ourselves in just having that knowledge, right? Um, and that's a big piece of this approach that you all play a key role in how we can best support our students. Um, we do have a lot of on-demand and online resources, both here at Ohio State and referring out to different uh, nonprofits and educational organizations across the country. Um, we have a number of different workshops and trainings for our students here on campus, but also for our faculty and staff. Megan uh, got into that a little bit, but I do uh, provide a lot of workshops for faculty and staff and expanding on this topic that we're talking about here today and that student experience and how we can best support them in their wellness journeys. Um, but I'll have a slide on that here at the end so you can get an idea of what we have to offer you. One-on-one -on -one counseling and coaching, both in our office here in the Student Wellness Center, but also in counseling and consultation services, their team providing that one-on-one -on -one counseling um, services to our students. Uh, fitness resources, uh, rec sports plays a huge role in this in getting students access to fitness and um, physical education um, here on campus with their uh, eight different recreational centers, as well as their aquatic center and then peer-to-peer -peer support. So um, here in the Student Wellness Center, we do have a very robust team of uh, student volunteers that facilitate our programs and really providing that peer-to-peer -peer model and educating one another on health and well-being needs. Um, students know what they need, right? And so however we can get them to talk to one another, to educate one another, to be advocates for wellness, they play, again, this really important piece into this approach that we're taking here on campus um, in promoting health and wellness out to our students. Um, going into the next section here, talking about some of the signs and symptoms that we might be seeing within our students. And we, we're going to talk about this in a mild, moderate, and severe uh, categories. And so starting with mild, um, these are some of those experiences that students are having that are part of like that normal transitional period that this age group, this traditional ex student experience age for 18 to 24 year olds, um, what they normally would be experiencing, right? Like there's a lot of challenges that come with starting um, college, this transition to adulthood. You know, we expect high school seniors to just over one summer uh, mature and grow up and know how to do all the adult things. And then once they get here to campus, we expect them to know how to feed themselves, to take care of themselves, to manage their finances, um, to on top of it, start a brand new uh, academic curriculum, right? Like we expect all these things. And so some of these challenges that pop up because of that would fall under this mild category. So uh, maybe difficulty getting work done, having struggles, uh, adjusting to this new schedule that they have um, on this new academic calendar. Um, showing up late for class, missing class at times, maybe some mild changes in mood, um, not turning in assignments on time, maybe struggling with that, you know, that increased rigor that's associated with a college education as opposed to K through 12. Um, feelings of being overwhelmed, maybe some procrastination because of that. Maybe we're having some test anxiety, adjustment to that new environment. There's a lot of adjustments here, finding that community, finding that friend group. Um, maybe they're struggling within that area of, you know, maybe they're brand new to Columbus, maybe brand new to Ohio State, whatever that might look like. Um, they might not know anybody. So making friends and leaving that community, that support community that they once had um, could fall into this mild category. And when we see some of these things pop up, we recognize some of these signs and symptoms that students are having, um, really assuming that positive intent, right? Like the student, maybe they need some support. Maybe I should reach out, see how they're doing. Some resources that we can support here would be the Student Wellness Center and our wellness coaching services, counseling and consultation service. They have um, different workshops. They have their walk-in Let's Talk program. Silver Cloud is an asynchronous app that students can download. Um, the Smart Lab Dennis Learning Center uh, Buckeye Careers all have, you know, one-on-one -on -one coaching programs, the wellness app, MindStrong. These all fall into this mild category because they're not that like crisis intervention, right? They're more on-demand resources, talking through some of the challenges, developing those personal strengths that we have internally and working through those challenges that are, you know, coming up, yeah. um, setting up some of those healthy habits um, that a student needs to really thrive here, right? Like, so talking to an academic coach within the Dennis Learning Center and figuring out, okay, I'm having this test anxiety. I'm having uh, trouble adjusting to this, the requirements of my program. How can I get support there? So when we see some of these mild challenges students are having, we can refer 
refer out to these resources and really support in this multimodal approach um, and, and recognizing like, hey, this student may need support. Let's get them the support that they need. This moderate category, this is going to be like that next level up of um, we're going to see some more um, uh, more increased need for um, support in this area um, where a coaching conversation might not be enough, right? Like a peer-to-peer -peer conversation might not be enough. Attending a workshop might not be enough. Um, but it's that higher level of care that um, maybe the need for talking to a counselor or their medical doctor might be um, warranted in the situation. So students may be experiencing excessive absences. So really seeing those extensive absences um, on our attendance sheets, um, significant increase or decrease in sleep or appetite. You may not know that if you don't have these direct personal conversations with students, but um, if you are supervising student employees, it may pop up. You might recognize this. You might see that, you know, they're not taking time for their personal hygiene or their personal care. Increased use in drugs and or alcohol. So using that those substances potentially for self-care. Um, panic attacks, not taking care of self or neglecting personal hygiene, like I said. Uh, withdrawing from friends or family. Um, so really not connecting with those support systems that, that they have, um, maybe here or back at home, wherever that might be. Uh, frequent crying spells, anxiety or mood changes that are significantly interfering with their life. So we may not know these things unless we are having that direct conversation with these students, or maybe they're coming to us for support um, and, and asking for help. But if you are recognizing these signs and symptoms, um, again, resources on the screen for, for support for these students. So counseling and consultation services, um, scheduling that phone screening, getting an appointment to see a counselor. Um, they do have their community provider database if a student's interested in um, getting support within the community. This is a resource for all of us. So if we as faculty and staff need that extra support, we can look for the community provider database to find a, a therapist that can help us in our own needs as well. Um, the Psychological Services Center, uh, OSU Couple and Family, uh, Family Therapy Clinic, they do provide psychological services as well. Um, Harding Hospital, Behavioral Health Immediate Care, the Will Student Health Center, all medical uh, facilities there. Student Life Student Advocacy is a great resource for our students and the support that they potentially will need. Um, and then Student Life Disability Services as well and getting that extra support for our student population. The last section here, so severe. Um, so behaviors, uh, students may experience behaviors such as violence, unpredictable angry outbursts, inability to communicate clearly, uh, suicidal or uh, homicidal thoughts, so, you know, harming themselves or others, uh, loss of contact with reality, extensive and dangerous substance use, unable to take care of their basic needs. Maybe they experience an event such as hazing or unwanted sexual experiences, sexual assault, a hate crime, uh, a recent grief or loss, um, legal or conduct consequences, anything that would fall under this category. Um, we do want to make sure that those students are getting directly connected to a support resource. Um, Counseling and Consultation Service does have a crisis line that operates 24-7 that students can call into um, after hours if, if they're in need to talk to someone immediately. Um, taking the student to the Wexner Medical Center emergency room, which is located um, at the address on the screen. Um, the United States now has this 988 lifeline that provides free and confidential support for people who are in distress. Um, so calling that line um, is an alternative to calling 911, but getting connected to a counselor or a social worker, a therapist of some kind to get that support. Um, I will say, I, I didn't realize this. I called this the other night to support my neighbor. They were in need um, of a crisis intervention. And so I called 988 to get them the support that they needed. Um, it is directly connected to your area code. And I wasn't aware of this. And so they couldn't send a behavioral health team out to my location because my zip code or my area code is um, my where I grew up, it's my it's my parents' original like area code from Canton, Ohio, and uh, Stark County, and so um, that is like something that to be aware of that if you do call the nine eight eight number, that it is going to be connected to the area code that is connected to your phone, which can be a huge barrier for our student population um, if they're not originally from Columbus, Ohio, right? Like we have a huge population of students that are from here, so. Um, it's a great service if they just need that phone conversation, but if they need that behavioral health team to come out and support, it might not be the best call and calling 911 or OCPD might be the next best option. Um, NetCare Access is a local organization uh, that provides crisis support for residents in Franklin County. So again, you're going to get these, um, these slides, these resources so that you're aware of 
you know, what this potentially looks like in some of those resources. Another way to think about this is on this spectrum, right? So, you know, where is the student falling in this spectrum? Are they, we do see a lot of our students falling into this comfort zone, this false sense of wellness, this neutral zone of like, our wellness isn't negatively impacting my life. So it's not a high priority on my to-do list. So I'm going to make sure that, you know, maybe tomorrow I'll eat something healthier. I'll go, go exercise, you know, but today I got other things to do. Right. But what we want to do is we want to try and help educate those students and push them into the right side of the screen and get them the education and resources to recognize that wellness should be a priority, right? Like it directly impacts um, your ability to do well in academics. It impacts your, um, retention and success rate within your college career. Um, So making a priority for this uh, before there's the need um, or there's a concern, right? Like before something happens, um, they'll be better prepared to address those challenges as they pop up. Um, If we're looking at those resources on this spectrum, the Student Wellness Center would fall into the middle category where we're going to work with these students um, who are you know, maybe in need of a coaching conversation of some additional education and try and push them into the right side of the screen. Whereas if a student does need that crisis intervention or talking to a counselor or a psychiatrist or a psychologist or a doctor, um, those are the students that are going to be more further into the left side of the screen where they are experiencing negative um, symptoms as it relates to their mental or physical health. Um, And so in need of more of that higher level of care, if that makes sense. But really want to think about that prevention piece and how we can Uh, get students before they're in need of that, right? So why is this all important? I feel like that was a lot of information that I just like word vomited at you. Um, But this is important because students do confide in us, right? Like we're staff and faculty. We are those authority figures here on campus. We have that knowledge of campus, um, just that awareness of campus and what resources are available. At least that's how students perceive us, right? So we want to make sure that we are prepared um, for when a student comes to us with that need for support. We do track referrals in our office. Um, Faculty and staff are always at the top of that list. Um, Friends and RAs and then staff and faculty are generally top three in that area. Um, So they're listening to you. They're confiding in you and they're listening to you um, and getting those the support that they need because of something that you recommended. So one, thank you for doing that. Um, And two, continue to do it, right? Um, Just get students the help that they need. So wh- what does this look like? Where are students struggling here on campus? What does this look like for our student population? Um, I've got some 2021 National Collegiate Health Assessment data. Um, this is looking at students who responded um, to questions uh, at the bottom of the screen. You'll see like felt nervous, felt hopeless, felt fidgety in the past 30 days. Students um, here that are represented in the percentages responded either all the time or most of the time. Um, so we had 30% of students uh, felt nervous all or most of the time in the last 30 days, feeling hopeless, feeling restless or fidgety, um, feeling so sad that nothing could cheer them up, uh, felt everything was an effort, uh, felt worthless. And these are definitely significant numbers that we're seeing with students um, in their mental health and the challenges that they're experiencing in the last 30 days. Again, this was in uh, 2021. It is distributed in around February. Um, And I don't know if they're going to be doing it this year. So I don't know if we're going to get updated 20. I don't know if they did it in 2022. So we'll see if we'll get updated data. But this is from 2021 and the responses that students had there. Um, Again, NCHA um, students feeling that that connection, that community, finding that sense of belonging here on campus. So feeling that lack of companionship, feeling left out or feeling isolated from others. Um, The red bar um, all the way to the left is going to be often. Um, The middle bar, the gray bar is going to be some of the time. And then the light blue or the right bar is going to be hardly ever. So if we're looking at, you know, students feeling that lack of companionship, either often or some of the time, that that's a very large proportion of numbers who are not finding the sense of community. And for at least us here in the Student Wellness Center, that is uh, right on track with some of the trends that we're hearing in our conversations with students and wanting to um, find this sense of belonging, not sure how to find this community um, or how to even start these conversations. You know, the students we have on campus are such a unique population because of COVID and how it really disrupted um, their last few years of high school and now being thrown into this college experience um, and not sure how to navigate what that looks like or or make friends or have conversations or or where to find those things, right? So this definitely is on track with what we're hearing in our conversations. Uh, Last graph from the National Collegiate Health Assessment. Um, 
This is uh, so the students who responded that they were experiencing symptoms of anxiety, depression, sleep difficulties, or stress. Um, this is how often those are negatively impacting their academic performance. So students were experiencing anxiety to the level that it was negatively impacting their academic performance. So 31% here are saying anxiety. Uh, we're seeing that depression, sleep difficulties, stress, um, really topping out that list at almost 40% um, of students responding that their stress is negatively impacting their academic performance. So recognizing these signs and symptoms um, in our students and making sure that we're providing space and creating this wellness focused environment so that um, we can support them in these areas um, so that they can do well in their academics. It's really, really important for their academic success here. Um, and I'm not saying that we need uh, you all to you know, diagnose anyone, right? It's, it's not, you know, we're not training you to be counselors or providing you, you know, that um, that information to like go and diagnose a student with, oh, you're having depression, right? Um, no, we want you to just be aware of like what this could mean for a student, what it might look like so that we can um, have that conversation so we can, you know, express concern and say, hey, let's go talk to someone or let's get you connected to a support resource. Um, you know, like let's help you out and connecting that back to, you know, you're not doing so hot in this class. Like, let's see what's going on see how we can support you in that area. Uh, the last graph I have here, this is from uh, October. So wellness assessment results from October of 2022. Um, this is looking at those 10 dimensions that I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. Um, you can see them here at the bottom of the screen. The red, so the left graph, um, the left bar in the red is going to be our undergraduate student population. Um, the gray on the left is going to be our graduate professional student population. Uh, you can see how they're doing. These are all on a five-point scale um, as to how well students are doing in each of these different areas. And it really aligns with that that um, like false sense of wellness, that mild, moderate, uh, severe category of like who's doing exceptionally well, who's doing just okay, and then who needs that need for um, crisis intervention. Luckily, what we're seeing here on the screen is that no one is in that 3.0 or belower, which is what we would call that um, severe concern um, for students and within those dimensions. Uh, but we are seeing them really all falling into this middle category of this false sense of wellness where they're doing okay, but having that little bit of extra support can really push them into that exceptional category um, and doing really well in each of the different dimensions. Some areas of focus that our office is going to be um, doing some additional programming on, uh, looking at our financial wellness, that's one of our lowest, um, emotional wellness uh, or our mental health for our students, that's one of our lowest. Um, the creative wellness, um, we're doing some new programming around creative wellness, including adding art therapy requests to um, our programming options um, for our students to get more creative wellness options into the classroom or into um, organizations or just events taking place on campus. Um, and then lastly, this digital wellness. So this is the first year that we had digital wellness on the wellness assessment. Um, it's brand new as of October of 2020. So we don't really have any comparison data for this dimension, but um, even just comparing it to the other um, the other dimensions, it is falling into that lower category, into that lower um, number category um, here. So those would be our, our trends coming up here in spring and what we're going to be focusing on for our student population. Um, we do get wellness assessment results every year. It takes place every October. So we'll see how these numbers change with those um, intentional programming that we're doing, at least within our, our office and what we're promoting out to the campus community. So how can we, in the last few minutes here, we're going to talk about um, how we can support our student well-being. So, you know, you heard, you, you just saw the data points that we have that the Student Wellness Center is going to be focusing on. You all know your students best. Um, you know what's going on um, within and outside the classroom. Um, but what you can do to, like, try and help with creating this wellness-focused environment is starting off with that evaluation, right? Like, let's let's see, you know, what how are our students doing? Um, what does our environment look like? Um, do our students feel comfortable coming to us if they need that support, if they are concerned about themselves or someone else and, and they're looking for for that support? Are they comfortable coming to us um, in instances like that? Um, or are they comfortable calling off work if they're not feeling well, right? Like little things like that um, can help us to get a better picture of what our environment looks like. Um, one of the things, you know, do we have a wellness statement on our syllabus uh, or a mental health statement? Are we reading those out loud? Are we actually discussing what that means with our students within our classroom and, you know, making it a priority to point out what are those helping resources? How can we get support? What does this look like for your academics? If you need mental health support, how can I be the person um, that you can come to in that situation, right? Um, so how are we portraying that out to our, whether it's our classroom, if we're faculty members, um, if we're overseeing a student organization, if we're 
we're overseeing student employees or a lab, whatever, whatever that relationship looks like. How are we vocalizing this care for wellness with our student population and creating that wellness focused environment? So an evaluation can really help there um, to see where those needs, maybe where those gaps are and how we can adjust. Um, grace period or rolling deadlines. So if you are teaching a class or you have work assignments that you're assigning to um, your students, instead of having that hard deadline for a homework assignment or work project paper, whatever it might be, um, you know, try instilling like this grace period or this rolling deadline, right? Like you have so many days to complete this. Um, so then, you know, if an unexpected challenge does come up, where it forces a student to choose between their well-being um, or the well-being of a dependent um, and turning in an assignment on time, they don't have to make that hard choice, right? They have a couple of days to have that grace period in that instance. So then they can say, hey, I'm, I'm having this mental health crisis or I need to take care of my mom or, um, you know, my kid needs to go to the doctor. I'm not going to be able to get this in on time. Um, you know, that can really help in providing um, that space for prioritizing wellness when they may not think that they can do that, right? Or there's a huge barrier. There's that, um, you know, that different professional level that you do have the sense of authority that, you know, a student might not be comfortable coming to you and saying like, I can't get this in on time for fear of their grade. But if you have that in your syllabus or you already have this built into your class, um, it removes that barrier and there's a little bit more comfort in asking for that support, right? Adding in wellness-focused activities, there are so many great wellness activities that you can do. Like I said, you can request art therapy through our office. We have workshops, presentations that you can request, um, doing guided meditations, starting off class with talking about, you know, what's going on in, you know, their world. How are they doing? What are they feeling? What emotions do they have? Like that can um, really... I, do a presentation with someone in the university libraries and she always starts off her presentation with that. Even if it's virtual, we have, you know, six different images of like, what are you feeling today? Put A, B, C, or D, you know, in the chat so we can get a general idea of how everyone's doing that day. That can give you an idea of what that class is going to look like. Um, and if you do need to build in more space for wellness focused activities um, or to maybe take a break from the curriculum to support your students, that can all, you know, help in that space. Um, Hosting regular check-ins if you can, um, and this can help with the, the next point of recognizing burnout. So if you do have the capacity to meet with your students um, on a regular basis, whether it's weekly or monthly or checking in at least once a semester, one-on-one -on -one or in a small group, just to see how everyone's doing, um, that'll help to build that relationship between you and your students and will help you to have an idea of where that student's baseline is, right? So then you can recognize um, some of those signs and symptoms that we talked about at the beginning of the presentation um, and when there may be aren't doing so well, right? So having that baseline, you can definitely notice some of those negative changes and then see, oh, hey, I need to have more of a serious conversation with this student and express concern or get them connected to support or whatever it might be. Y'all are definitely like this first line of defense for us. Um, and having more of that face time with students than, you know, my office or some of the other health and well-being offices can have if they're not coming to us, right? Um, promoting wellness on campus. There are so many great wellness things already taking place on campus. Our office does a number of really great things. Buckeye Wellness is doing great things for our staff and faculty, but they also have a number of programs for students through the College of Nursing. Um, so recognizing like, hey, these things are going on, promoting that out to your student population. You don't have to reinvent the wheel or try something brand new. If you want to, great. If not, then, you know, don't worry about it. We already have a lot of things going on. Um, you know, I talked about creative wellness and how there's definitely like a, a lower um, percentage of students doing well in that category, but we have the Wexner Center for the Arts on campus. They're always doing wellness focused activities there. Um, they were doing a great mindfulness series there. They were doing yoga in the galleries, you know, just even telling your students about that. They may not have uh, the awareness and knowing that's going on, but if you're promoting that wellness on campus and just making a regular thing of highlighting these great events that are already taking place, students are going to see that you're prioritizing that and, um, you know, letting them know that they can take care of themselves in that space, which can be really great. And if you have the capacity to offer extra credit for attending a wellness event, like that's even better, right? Like that would be even better in promoting that wellness on campus and, and getting students to attend. Um, and then lastly is reaching out to the Student Wellness Center for suggestions. We are always welcome to collaborate. We always want to be there to support you in however we can and providing you with uh, the education tools and resources that you need to support your students. So definitely reach out to us. Um, you know, email me if you want to be on a mailing list. Like we're happy to send out information about, you know, what we've got going on um, for, for the student population here on campus. Um, just some information about the different health and wellness uh on campus, there, I've talked a lot about counseling and consultation services. This is where our mental health practitioners are. 
psychologists, psychiatrists, certified counselors. Um, this is a confidential resource for our students. Um, they offer individual group couples counseling. They have workshops, crisis debriefing, all kinds of really great stuff there for our student population. Um, the Will Student Health Center, this is where we're going to find our medical doctors. Again, a confidential resource for them. Um, they have outpatient facility providing all kinds of primary care and preventative care um, uh, appointments for our students. Uh, rec sports is our group fitness. Uh, this is where all of our fitness and physical education is coming from. So personal training, uh, intramural sports, sports clubs, uh, outdoor recreation, they have their aquatics and gym. Um, and then the student wellness center providing um, those additional supports within the holistic wellness space. And we are not a confidential resource. We are a private resource um, for students here on campus. One last resource here is going to be our health and wellness resource guide. If you have not already seen this, we'll definitely share a link out for you. Um, but on the Student Wellness Center website, it's up here at the top, um, the health and wellness resource guide. We have done all the hard work and pulled together all the health and wellness related resources on campus for you um, to find those supports on campus to best support your students. So you can filter based on needs. So you can search, you know, creative wellness. I'm working with graduate professional students. You can filter and it brings it down from 131 down to 12 resources that you can refer your students to. So um, trying to make it as easy as possible to get your students connected to those support resources. Um, if you select any of these, so let's see this Wexner Center for the Arts, it's got a short description there, as well as links, their events calendar, jobs, internships, volunteering, and contact information. All of the um, resources are <clears throat> set up this way um, with those additional resources or, or additional links and contact information if they have it. Um, and then la and I did say lastly, but I have like two more slides, sorry. <laughs> You're a great resource for our students, really thinking about this culture that we're creating um, around wellness for both our students, but also for our colleagues, and um, really thinking about how we can adjust our mindset to have more of this positive thinking and this empathy towards one another. It can play a really big role in, you know, rethinking how we're entering spaces, questioning, you know, the questions that we ask, how we're showing up. Um, you know, oftentimes it's really easy to jump to conclusions about identifying like this root issue or this cause of what's going on, you know, instead of, you know, a student showing up late or not coming to class because they're having a mental health crisis, maybe we immediately jump to, oh, they must have been out partying all night or something like that, right? But instead, you know, of saying that, flipping it and reaching out and saying, hey, you weren't in class today. I want to reach out and see if you're okay. Is there anything that I can do to support you? So really rethinking that mindset, changing um, how we're you know, uh, showing up in these spaces and how we're supporting our students um, can really help to uh, create more of this empathetic uh, campus culture here on campus and focusing on our wellness. Some support resources for y'all. Um, we have the resource guide, our wellness, uh, our website has all kinds of updates. Um, I can send a link out to the wellness assessment reports. They're very fascinating. We're updating um, the website with the 2022 data. Um, so really recent information on our student populations and where they need that extra support. Um, some workshops coming up. We've got guiding students to wellness recovery ally training. Um, we've got three of those sessions taking place this semester that you can sign up for. Uh, conversations with the SWC in a few weeks on February. February 8th, we're going to be talking, we'll have a panel discussion um, over Zoom with our um, coordinators here in the office talking about trends um, that we're hearing from our coaching conversations with students. So fall trends we'll be discussing and how um, you can refer students to our office, but also um, how we can make friendly uh supportive spaces to support students in those trends that we're hearing and like where students are specifically struggling. Um, and then the wellness micro series this is taking place next week. Um, and in the last week in February, this is brand new for our office. There are 20 midget, 20 minute education sessions um, taking place over the lunch hour. So uh, hopefully you can attend some of them, attend all of them, whatever that looks like. Um, but quick, bits of information talking about specific wellness topics. Um, we're talking about digital wellness. We're going to be talking about spiritual wellness. Um, we're going to go more in depth of that mild, moderate, severe slides that I talked about. Um, so check out the SWC wo workshops, uh, go.osu.edu slash SWC workshops to get uh, signed up for any of those. Um, and then we have our signature events as well in our office. Um, that is all that I have today. I feel like I ended up talking really quick there at the end because I wanted to make sure I I felt like I was hitting time, but um, what questions do you all have? We're, we're going to share the slides. Megan's going to send these out um, with everyone. I'll also share some additional links as well as my contact information. So if you want to um, connect with me, please feel free to do so. Like I said, I'm, I'm basically a consultant to support you however I can. So let me know what kind of supports I can provide. What questions? 
For sure. Yeah. First of all, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This was awesome. We love the re- the, the webpage that you showed at the very the resource end. guide. Uh, the so filter. good. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's phenomenal. Everyone. We've got some amazing. big updates coming to that here soon. So we're going to be making it even easier. Um, we're going to be adding like a crisis intervention tab. So button. So if somebody's in immediate crisis, they can click that and get connected to support. So That's we've right. got some good things coming up for that here soon. It is super cool. Yeah. So we'll make sure you get that. And then we'll obviously post this recording and get you stuff. We have one more next week. So I'd like to hold until next week to send every after next Wednesday's webinar. So then I'm not sending out multiple. Send everything. And then my other comment, and please feel free to put some stuff in the Q&A since that's where we are. And I saw Josh pop on. So Josh, hang on just a moment if you're there after everybody leaves. Um, The 988, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. I didn't I'm either. So I called. Glad you mentioned that. Yeah. I so called glad. and so we'll I was have connected. To, we'll have, we're going to talk on our end because that's, yes. that's big. That's big. It is. Yeah. I called and um, they, I was like, we need a behavior health team to come out. And they're like, okay, let's get you connected to the dispatcher. And um, she's um, like, where are you located at? And I said, Hilliard. Right. And she goes, what county is that in? And I was like, Franklin. She's like, oh, I'm in Stark. We can't support Franklin mm-hmm. County. I'm like, and then I was like, oh, my 330. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Had no idea. Yeah, yeah, I didn't either. I had never heard that. So I'm glad so, you told me. That's my big takeaway. Yes. Yeah. So definitely want to, I, I want to share that out as many people as possible because I had no idea. It's not in any of like their marketing materials when I like read about the 988 number. So definitely some awareness that needs to be had there. Um, okay. Right. So Greta just said like, really great to know all the student, op- the opportunities for the student body. So yes. thank you. Well, thank you I all know. for being here. Yeah, I know we're over yeah. time. <laughs> So we'll hold for a minute if you all, but you are welcome to go to enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Thank you. Thank you for being here.